Today's video is sponsored by Verydesk. Yo guys, Jonathan here, and these are two of Apple's newest 21.5 inch iMacs. One you absolutely should not buy, the other is more powerful than you might think, only a couple hundred dollars more, and surprisingly, a really good value, which is not something you'd normally say in the same sentence with Apple. So I'm gonna stack them side by side, even throw in a MacBook Pro, but before we do that, let's check out a word from today's sponsor, Verydesk. So if you work on a computer, chances are you are sitting way longer than you actually should. If you're looking to get into the standing desk world, the Verydesk Pro Plus Hitstand solution is awesome. First off, what I really appreciate is the fact that it comes pre-built out of the box. There's no messing around with manuals, no instructions, no tools. You're just instantly ready to go. What's also cool is that this will work with your existing desk. Just throw it on top, it's sturdy, it's really well built and super simple to adjust. They come in multiple colors, configurations, so if you wanna learn more, make sure you guys check out the link below. And again, big thanks to Verydesk for sponsoring this portion of the video. So this is the iMac that you shouldn't buy, the baseline 4K 21.5 inch iMac. And it's not a bad machine by any means. In fact, the performance is surprisingly good, but the fact that Apple includes, for whatever reason, a 5400 RPM hard drive in 2019 is crazy. All the MacBooks, the MacBook Pros, the Mac Minis, the iMac Pros come with really fast SSDs as the base storage option. Even the bigger brother, the 27 inch iMac comes with a fusion drive as the base option. So the fact that it's not the same in the smaller iMacs is a little odd. To be fair, the 5400 RPM hard drive isn't as slow as I thought it would be. You're getting read and write speeds about 100 megabytes per second, which isn't bang your head into a desk slow, but you're definitely gonna feel it and not in a good way in day-to-day -day tasks. Enter this iMac, the Step Up, which comes in at $14.99 US. It's gonna get you a Fusion Drive, a six core CPU as opposed to the quad core on the base model and better graphics. So it kind of seems like a no brainer. Now the Fusion Drive isn't going to compete head to head with a pure SSD, it's just not possible. What it is though is part SSD, part mechanical drive, and honestly, the majority of the storage is the mechanical portion, so you're getting that benefit of the capacity, and you are gonna get certain benefits of the SSD like boot times and loading apps. Fancy talk and tech gibberish aside, what does that translate to in real life? In terms of boot time, the 5400 RPM iMac boots up in about 50 seconds, which might not seem that long, but when you compare it to the Fusion Drive, which comes in at 20 seconds, that difference is night and day. Now performance on that Fusion Drive initially is kind of amazing. Like you run that test and you're like, oh my God, this is crazy fast. Once you give it a little time and it kind of runs its course, you'll see the advantage is in that initial burst because after it levels out to about 100 megabytes per second, both read and write. So clearly there is an advantage jumping from that 5400 RPM hard drive up to the Fusion Drive, but if you're curious what advantages an SSD would get you, I took about 183 gigabytes of footage and transferred that from our Jellyfish server down to a 27 inch iMac with a pure SSD, and that took about five minutes, which is really freaking fast. For comparison on the 5400 RPM equipped iMac and the Fusion equipped iMac, that same task took about 30, minutes, which is a huge difference. So if you really truly care about speed, jumping up to an SSD might not be a bad option. Alternatively, what would make a great companion to that Fusion iMac is to grab a Samsung T5 SSD. They're small, they're compact, smacked it to the back, and you got a super machine. From there, there's no arguing. I'll be the first to admit the current iMac design is looking a little outdated. That chin, that bezel, it just doesn't feel like something from 2019. So Johnny I, it's time for an update. Ugly chin and bezels aside, the display is really good. Like where else are you gonna get a beautiful 21.5 inch true 4K display that packs a six core CPU, pretty decent graphics, a wireless keyboard and mouse out of the box, all for that price point. In terms of IO, it's gonna be the exact same as the bigger 27 inch iMacs. So you're gonna get a headphone jack, SD card slot, four USB-A ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports in the flavor of USB-C and gig ethernet. Now I realize Linus Tech Tips is doing the Arthur Fist in those sandals right now with the lack of 10 gig ethernet on these iMacs. You can, however, thanks to Thunderbolt 3, pick up an adapter like this. It's about 150 bucks and that will give you full-fledged 10 gig ethernet to both a 21 or 27 inch iMacs. So I'm not the biggest fan of synthetic benchmarks, but for reference, here is how that i5 six core CPU stacks up against the quad core i3 model. 
There's a pretty big jump in terms of multi-core performance, but what's really interesting is how close that i5 6-core iMac hangs with the maxed out i9 Vega MacBook Pro. It's kind of crazy. Same thing with OpenCL. You're getting performance jumps as expected, but what's really cool is you can throw Vega 20 into this 21-inch iMac. Now, clearly this isn't Linus Tech Tips, so gaming isn't going to be the focus. And again, you should not buy a Mac of any kind if gaming is your sole purpose. Build your PC. If you do wanna do some light gaming though, testing out Rise of the Tomb Raider with the synthetic benchmark at 1440p low on that baseline iMac, you're looking about 22 frames per second and jumping up to that next level up, that's gonna get you about 29. I am much more a fan of real world examples, so what that translates to on the 560X equipped iMac, you can run Tomb Raider at 1080p on medium, whereas with the 555X, you're looking at 1080p on low. Also, for whatever it's worth, I know Cuphead isn't the most graphically intensive game. It's annoying and super freaking hard, but you were able to run both at 60 FPS at 4K on both of these machines. So jumping back to how surprised I was with performance on these smaller iMacs, most of the time I'm on the bigger 27-inch iMac Pro. I've been messing with the 27-inch non-pro as well, but opening up Final Cut and exporting one of my recent projects that went live on YouTube, the AirPods clone video, which is 4K, around six minutes, the export times kind of blew my mind. The quad-core i3 iMac exported the project in three minutes and 35 seconds, and again, that's not that bad for the baseline option. The six core i5 clocked in at three minutes and 15 seconds, and then throwing in that Vega 15 inch MacBook Pro, that was really fast at two minutes and 58 seconds. It is worth noting that background rendering with this project was turned on, and yeah, that is how most Final Cut users will use Final Cut, but to push things up a notch to make them a little more extreme, I turned background rendering off, opened up some red 8K raw footage, and then exported that to 8K ProRes, and that was honestly a bigger jump in performance between these models. The quad-core i3 iMac clocked in at six minutes and 40 seconds. The six-core i5 model was a huge jump at three minutes and three seconds. And then that 15-inch Vega MacBook Pro was two minutes and 38 seconds, which is really freaking fast. So with that, there was a pretty big jump in terms of performance with the i5 iMac and the i3. A lot of that had to do with the CPU, but also it had a lot to do with the GPU. So again, for 200 bucks more, you're getting a huge performance jump, a faster drive, and that kind of makes this the no-brainer option. Aside from that, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you wanna see more comparisons against the 27 inch iMac, maybe a more extensive test against the MacBook Pro, let me know by dropping a like. This is Jonathan and I will catch you guys later.